You were back in the doll today, of course, having been kicked out on Tuesday. Um, you, you thought that was very unfair, obviously. I did, yeah. Um, do you think it had anything to do with the fact that you're a woman? And Leinster House is a bit of a sexist place to work in. Well, Leinster House is a very male um, is it environment. Sexist? It is at times, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to overstate that either or imagine that I'm looking for some kind of sympathy on that score as you've probably gathered at this stage I'm not exactly a, a shrinking violet um, and I understand that you have to stand your ground in, in politics I mean my annoyance with the Cowan Corla the other day was the fact that I was wrapping up my speech uh, he intervened at a fairly critical moment in that speech. I thought for one mo for a while that I had got run over the time, but he quoted a, a standing order to me that I now understand hasn't been invoked in a very, very long time. I thought it was unnecessary. I thought it was disruptive. Um, and whilst the rules of the of the doll have to be applied and we have to conduct our business in, in an orderly way, it is a democratic chamber. And it's our job to hold the government to account. And on a day particularly like Budget Day, which is one of the, if not the set piece political moment uh, of the year, I just thought it was very unhelpful and I got turfed out. Uh, on the issue of the, of the water charges itself, I, I think that Paul Murphy and his campaign uh, naturally enough, because they were out to get as much support as, as they could, uh, put around the view that there was confusion or that we, did, you know, that we were unsure of our position. We have been very sure of this matter actually since the year 2010, in terms of this state, and prior to that in 2007, when we knocked on the head the British government plans to introduce new charges for domestic water in the north. Um, just to say this. What um, what Paul and his colleagues did was to um, run their campaign on the basis of essentially a slogan, saying to people, don't pay. Uh, our position as part of the Right to Water campaign uh, is not to advocate a no-pay policy. The, the camp Right to Water campaign does not advocate that position. We respect the fact that people and individual households have to make that call, and that will be dependent on how many people are in a household, if they're adults or children, the income level of that household. And it will also be coloured by the, the very real facts that government continues to say, well, if you don't pay, your supply may be reduced to a trickle. If you don't pay, that there might be a, a difficulty around your, your tenancy agreement. And those are very serious things for any family to face into. And we're conscious of that because we do have... So do you think the socialists then were irresponsible to go around telling people? Well, I'll tell you pay. this. I believe that if, if we take our experience of no-pay campaigns, take the bin charges. I still have, in my home area of Cabra and the inner city, people who come to me who are still paying back those bills. And let me tell you this, you see the people who said to them, don't pay, don't pay, don't pay, they are nowhere to be seen now. And this, there was a similar experience in, re, in, res, in respect of the house, household charge, a similar experience in respect of the, the property tax. We're opposed to that property tax, but we were very clear to say to people, when you're deciding for yourself and for your family, do so with your eyes wide open. And we are not presumptuous enough to imagine that we tell people what to do. Yeah. Far from What's it. What's Sinn Féin going to do about tr vote transfers? Because it, it, it's just not something you're very strong on at the moment, and it's hampering your ability to win seats. <laughs> Well, I think we're more transfer friendly now than we would have been perhaps a number of years ago. And the answer to your question is we will work hard, we will articulate our political position, we'll stand our ground, we'll talk to people. And, and over time, I, I'm very conscious of somebody who's run in elections, who's won elections, who has also lost elections, mm. um, that you don't take anything for granted and that you earn your stripes and you earn your standing with people by being, I, I, I think, relevant and consistent. And and um, the, the, the issue around transfers, you can look at it through a number of lenses. Some of it at times is tactical voting. That's it. The PR system allows itself uh, to that. It's the best system, by the way, the proportional representation system, um, because it allows for diversity of representation. But the answer to your question, not a case of you know, what single thing will Sinn Féin do, we, we will work as hard as we can on behalf of people. Uh, and we will seek their their mandate and their confidence, and that that's that's long haul. What stuff. about a, a voting you know voting pact with kind of maybe like-minded independents in, in some constituencies and things like that, 
or you know voting packs with, with other left-wing parties perhaps in some constituencies? That, well that that certainly might be an idea that's okay. um, that wouldn't be for me to decide obviously we'd have to consider yeah. that as a party but we've said uh, also that we do believe that we need not just new faces in government not just new personalities but we need um, people who are genuinely committed to a new politics and who aren't so timid uh, and at, at times very limited in their horizons that they assume you take office and you just continue on true to form and do things the way they have always been done. He's, he's absolutely emphatic that he did not say that. More than that, he's emphatic that he wouldn't say that. Yeah. Um, Jerry is a father himself. He, he's a grandfather, uh, as you know, um, and as people know, he had uh, experience of the, the, the horror that is uh, abuse within his own family circle. So he refutes that. He is absolutely adamant. He's offended as a human being, never mind as a, as a public figure that a, a, a statement like that is being but attributed there are big to. questions in the Republican about the, the way the Republican movement handled abuse allegations in the past, aren't there? There are huge questions to answer there at the moment. Well, I, I think specifically on, on the case that, that's in, in the news uh, at the minute, um, I'm conscious of a number of things. Firstly, that a person who has been abused or alleges uh, abuse has to be at the centre of your considerations. I, I know this from dealing with people who, who have suffered abuse in institutional settings, some of them within their own family circle, which by the way is still the place where people are most vulnerable towards abuse, sadly. Um, and I'm conscious that I don't want to say anything that hurts or discommodes somebody uh, who alleges that that experience happened to them. In this case, there was albeit belatedly, um, a court case. Mm -hmm. The court acquitted those that were accused. Um, of course, the correct thing to happen, that should happen in every case where anybody is abused, is that they tell, that they come forward, that they go to the relevant statutory authority. I'm absolutely satisfied that he's telling the truth. Um, I know that he's so been... So Maria Cahill is lying then? Is it, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And please don't put those words um, in my mouth. This is obviously a clear distinction he has between... Been, well, he has been quite emphatic in his recollection okay. of events. And he's absolutely emphatic that the, the remarks that are attributed to him were not made by him. Okay. I absolutely believe him on that score and, and I accept it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know... Beyond that, you ask me, does he have questions to answer? I have no doubt that the media will be asking him questions. I have no doubt that he will answer those questions. But we need to be careful here, on the one hand, not to cause any distress for somebody who may be a victim of abuse. I'm conscious of that. I'm also conscious that you can't slur a person's reputation and attribute uh, comments to them just because they're a public figure. I mean, we, there, there has to be an even-handedness and a level of respect at play in terms of how you deal with all of these issues. One more question on this issue. Um, will you meet Maria Cahill? I think she's asked to meet this year. I heard that. I heard that that was broadcast. Yeah. Of course I'll meet her. There's okay. absolutely no problem meeting her. Okay. Um, and more to the point, I believe Jerry would meet her too. So there's, there's no issue there. I'm more than happy to do that. Okay, a few more questions. Um, is there any party that you can say right now that you will definitely not go into coalition government with after the next election? Well, you know, you look at all of the political parties now and you say to yourself, you know, what, what are they at? So you have Fianna Fáil trying to redeem itself, having wrecked the place, wrecked the economy. Um, you have Fine Gael and Labour who, despite all of the promises in 2011, um, took the bat on from them and carried on true to form. So when you look at that lineup, you have to say to yourself, there's no immediate and obvious partner for government uh, shouting out at you. So I, I think our, our approach will be to say to people that on the basis of the policies that we set forward, which is about defending working families, which is about equality, um, which is about deep uh, political reform, that we seek a mandate on that. And then the issue of coalition itself really is Aside from the parties, it's, it's around the programme for government. So yeah. what is it that can be agreed? What is it that can be delivered? I know a lot of our membership 
uh, would have a very firm view that they would not be in government with Fianna Fáil. Mm -hmm. um, I know a, a, a good you? section of our, as, as they're currently behaving, absolutely. But I'm not going to get into the thing of you, they're in, they're out, they're in, they're out. I mean, we're not even in a general election okay. campaign. So no. every, everyone potentially could be a coalition partner? If or everyone potentially could not be a coalition okay. partner. So um, really check that out question. for an answer. Well, I, I think it is. <laughs> and just to remind you that uh, the party membership would make the decision as to yeah. whether or not Sinn Féin would enter into government. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to illustrate for you the dilemma that you clearly have identified for yourself, which is that there isn't an obvious partner that would be serious and committed to the kind of change that we want to see. Now, this is where the people come into the equation, and this is why people coming out and voting is so essential. As disinterested as they may be in politics, as disengaged as they may be, the people will be in the driving seat come the election, and it will be our job to convince them in sufficient numbers to back our mandate for political change. So that's that's our first port of call. <laughs> if you'd have stayed in Fianna Fáil, where do you think you'd be now? <laughs> well, I wasn't staying in Fianna Fáil. Um, hard. I don't know. I mean, if I had... You'd be leader of the party. If I had stayed in teaching, if I was a window cleaner, you know, if, ifs and ifs. Um, that's not a serious question, Hugh. Okay. That's... I thought that was a bit of a silly question, actually. <laughs> I, I tell you, you asked me about Fianna Fáil, the, the, the reality is that um, I discovered that I was just in the wrong party mm. um, and I still have lots of friends who are active Fianna Fáil members and they're, they're very good people, but I would say, I, I have said this to them, so it, it's no news to them, that uh, for me as a person who sees politics as a vehicle for change and more to the point a, a person who's committed to social justice issues that just was not where uh, Fianna Fáil was at um, I don't think to this day it's where Fianna Fáil are at so okay. does that help? It doesn't really answer the question but um, I, I don't think you've made any secret of your perhaps desire one day to lead Sinn Féin if and when that arises but what about being Taoiseach would you like to be Taoiseach someday? Well, why not? Why, why wouldn't we have a female Taoiseach? I think that would be fantastic. Um, and just on the issue of the leadership of the party, um, there is no vacancy. No. Um, the other thing is, uh, I have, when asked, I have said yes, I, I would consider as and when that arises. I'm also conscious that we have a lot of talent in the party, yeah. so I'm not one bit presumptuous to imagine that I would be the only uh, person uh, who would be capable of, of taking on that role. We actually have, have a number who would. But you're in pole position, you're the deputy leader at the mm. moment, so I mean, you know, you're the, the obvious successor, are you not? Well, according to you, I am. Well, I mean, thank you, you for that. Well, let's take an example. In Scotland, Alex Salmond has just been succeeded by Nicola Sturgeon, his mm. deputy leader. So, I mean, yeah, it, it would make sense. In, uh, but of course, I'm, I'm part of the, the Sinn Féin leadership as things uh, yeah. stand. So, I mean, I'm not running away or shying from the fact that uh, if, if I had the support of the party at some stage, that of course I would be interested in taking on that challenge. I, I'm never a believer in uh, sort of running away from things or, or saying out loud, you know, oh I can't do this or I can't do that. And I always say this to particularly women in political life, don't let your first instinct be to say, oh I can't do that or oh should I or second guess yourself. Because women are good at politics yeah. and I, I'm not, I'm not bigging myself up here and saying that I, I, I see that across you think you're the board. Good at politics? I think I'm okay. I, I don't know, others may have a, a different view on it. Um, Sean Barry clearly thinks that I'm not very good at adhering to standard, standing orders. But I've learned a lot and to this day I learn. Mm -hmm. you, you don't in, in this uh, in this walk of life I don't think you can ever say that you've exactly seen it all or that you have everything down to a T. Our, our work is about dealing with policy, of course, and legislation, but you're also dealing with people and events mm. and the change of events mm. and sometimes the pace of events. So I, I still have lots more to learn and I really look forward to learning it. Okay, Marilyn McDonald, thank you very much. Thank you.